And here we are live back at the Ohio Valley Emmy Awards, the 50th anniversary, as a matter of fact, where we showcase the broadcast professionals of tomorrow. I'm Gabe Ross from WOUB in Athens. Joining me alongside is Abby Grise of School Video News. Abby, great to have you here with us. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. And we're great, again, very happy to have you here. And here we are showcasing the future professionals of the region and of the business. And it's really quite a spectacular sight to see. We've been watching a little bit of the coverage that's happening right now here on OhioValleyEmmy.org and just some, some great, great quality products. Yes, these students are gaining real world experience before they even get to college, Absol so it's great. Absolutely right, you know, taking advantage of new things and old technologies, but again, the new technologies, in fact, social media, one of those technologies is very prevalent, of course, and that's where we invite you to join in tonight. Go to our social media pages. You can check them out, like us, follow us, subscribe to us. I think that's the lingo you cool kids yes, use today. I'm yes, not 100% certain. And it's Go that to easy. Ohio Valley Emmy on all three. And you can use the hashtag there you see on your screen, OVE50. And tell us about some of the most memorable uh, moments you remember in television over the course of the last 50 years. Not necessarily here at Ohio Valley Television, but. Uh, over the course of television history in the last 50 years, because we are celebrating uh, tonight. This is a big anniversary yeah. for us here uh, in the chapter. 50 years of doing these Emmy Awards, and you saw in the hallway, uh, I, we were talking earlier, just a lot of a lot of technology you guys aren't used to yeah. seeing in your generation. Yes. It, old TVs are everywhere. It's very interesting. What's the weirdest one you've mm -hmm. seen thus far? I saw a big one with a tiny screen, which didn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, believe it or not, that's the way they yes. used to be. And <laughs> but we'll we'll get to some of that stuff a little later on. But we want to get right to the re award recipients here tonight. So we're going to bring on our first uh, winner tonight. This is Carrie Brown from Gehanna Lincoln High School. Uh, Carrie, come on in here. And you are a winner in the arts and entertainment category for a in, uh, interesting little project called Students Who Dance. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, well, so as a dancer, I've cheated on my study of dance. Um, my teacher was like, hey, this would be a really cool idea because um, being a dancer and being a high school student, it's really hard to juggle. Um, you're dancing five days a week. You're there till 10 o'clock on nights. Um, so I did an entry about how students overcome that and why they still choose to dance when it can be so stressful and stuff um, and just kind of exploring that idea of dancing while being a high school student. Now at the end of your story you had a little stand-up where you were dancing yourself. Was that difficult to get? Um, it was really hard. I did it on one of my breaks by myself so I had my tripod and my camera um, and it took a lot of try to get the correct angle I wanted to look through the mirror um, and then like I would try it and then I would mess up like a footwork or something so I have to restart so I had to take it like 20 times or something but at the end it was all worth it because I like, got it exactly how I wanted and it was really exciting. Tell us your reaction when you found out that you were going to win a student production award for this. Um, I was really excited. I actually didn't know I was nominated because my teacher kind of does that and nominates us behind our back. Um, so he like called me up one summer day and was like, hey, you won this. And I was really confused because I didn't really know what it was. Um, but as I like looked more into it, I got really excited because it's just really encouraging um, to see your work recognized when you're looking at going into a um, field of film and stuff. Um, so I was really excited and I'm really blown away at this entire experience because it's a lot more professional and fancy than I thought it was going to be. Absolutely. What got you interested in film in the first place? Um, actually, I was contacted by a school in California just out of the blue um, and I was exploring just their idea um, and like everything and I saw uh, multimedia and television and I was like, oh, that'd be like really cool. Like I've always loved watching TV and movies. Um, and then like the more I thought about it, I thought it'd be really awesome. I've been doing broadcast at my school since fifth grade. Um, and I just thought like, I love how movies can make people feel certain things and like affect people just by something you create. Um, so the, like, the more I thought about it, the more it like just seemed right. Um, and the more I got excited about trying to pursue that career. What does the future hold for you now? Um, well, I'm going to my senior year of high school, um, which will be helping out the TV, um, making our weekly show like we always do, um, then looking to film schools, hopefully get to go to film school. I would love to be able to co-op in LA, which would be really cool. Um, and then just hopefully getting out there, I would love to be a director of movies or like television shows, um, but who knows what the future holds. It's a surprise. There you go. Anyone else you want to thank here tonight? Um, I would like to thank my TV um, advisor because he's actually the one who kind of pushed me to do this story because I didn't really want to do it um, and he taught me everything um, and also just my parents because recently it's been really hard like saying I want to go to film school because it can be really expensive and stuff but they've just been so supportive and um, so like pushing me to do it so it's been really great. 
All right. Well, thank you very much, Carrie. We appreciate yeah, you sharing you. your story, and we hope to see you back here next year. Hopefully. Senior year. Hey, it could happen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Really exciting to see, especially yeah. when it's when it's a project where you can uh, bring in uh, something you like to do personally and mix exactly. it with something else you like Your to own do. Personal touch. Exactly, and and you really I think I think one tells a better story uh, when they when they can do something like yes. that. Yes. Well, we've got a lot more winners uh, coming in right now. We're bringing in a brother pair actually, which is kind of nice. I've, I've had the fortunate opportunity to work with uh, my brothers in this industry yeah. and other members of my family. So these guys are going to understand uh, a little bit about it. We've got Jonathan and Jeremy Schaefer from Bowling Green High School and you guys won for Bad Rabbit Rap. Now, I mean, one can automatically assume, but what automatically makes this this rap bad? Um, well, basically it's, you know, you think of Easter Bunny. What do you think of? You think of innocent little sure. kids right. having fun, running the grass, picking up Easter mm -hmm. eggs. So we thought, you know, this is to our advantage. Let's take a twist on the normal Easter Bunny Rabbit and let's just bring out the thug side of the Easter Bunny. <laughs> and so we really had a lot of fun with that, just being able to manipulate things and have a lot of fun, having the Easter Bunny get beat up, riding around on the pink Cadillac. So we had a lot of fun making this video. Where does one draw that kind of experience from? <laughs> well, um, experience of like a, being a bad rabbit? In, in terms of where, <laughs> where do you get an idea of like, okay, a, pink, okay. a rabbit running around on a Cadillac, pink Cadillac, and, and, and all. That, that's just insane, at least to me on the outside, but you clearly thought this through. Yeah, well, the sky's the limit when you have an idea that open and available to play with. Um, I mean, we actually had the idea from a video called Bad Lip Readings. They, they ah, ever seen those? Big fan of those. Yeah, so there was one with Herman Cain, and he says, there's some bad rabbits on this block. <laughs> and and uh, so right after that, it was like two years ago, me and Jeremy started calling everyone bad rabbits. Stupid little inside joke. And that just developed into this idea where we wanted to make a video just all about bad rabbits and release it right before Easter and have let people have a good time with it. So Now, Jeremy, what exactly was your role in this? Um, well, most of the time uh, I was behind the camera and doing the video. Uh, John and a few other guys, they wrote most of the song. But most of the time I was behind the scenes doing camera work and editing. Is that what you want to go into after high school? Oh, yeah. Um, right now that's my main job in our little production company. We have That Guy Productions. I do most of the editing. Um, we both work behind the camera, but that's my real thing is post-production. That's what I'm interested in. And that's what you hope to do following high school? Yes. Most definitely. Now, you two are also being honored for another project of yours tonight, a, a video called Dream, mm -hmm. which I watched and I found very thought-provoking and interesting. Thank you. So, I saw that it was part of a 49-hour film competition. Did you really only have 49 hours to complete it? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, well, basically, it's uh, hosted by Western Kentucky University, and they give you a few different things you have to put inside the video, like a genre, uh, line of dialogue and mm -hmm. so you have to include all that and you work with a group of about six or seven people to make a film within 49 hours and so it's a really difficult task but it's, it's also very fun. Yeah we actually turned it in with only two minutes left and so uh, it was 49 hours because of the time change so the extra hour really saved us. Wow. <laughs> so that's that's got to be convenient there for yes. sure. Yeah. Well quickly anyone else you want to thank here tonight? Uh, yeah uh, Sundance Carter, Nicholas Williams, uh, Anyone else that helped out with the behind the scenes process of making the Bad Rabbit Rap, Chase Warner, thank you for lending us your pink convertible. Uh, that was Those are hard to come by. Yes, that was a deal breaker. Thank you so much to everyone involved. This was definitely a passion project, running around downtown with bunny ears on. You definitely have to have a little bit of motive to be doing that. So thank you to everyone that backed this project, our parents, thank you so much. We wouldn't have been able to do it without you. Same. <laughs> Ditto. <laughs> Ditto. That goes for me. Well, guys, congratulations. We're happy about your honorable mentions and your production awards. We hope to see you back here again. Thanks right. so much. Thank you very much. A pink Cadillac. I know. Where does crazy, one get the idea crazy. of that? That's, that's what I was regardless. Them about earlier. Where still did you pretty come cool. By one of those? Hmm. That's uh, always always interesting. <laughs> well, speaking of things the the youngsters are into nowadays. Heck, even us old folks are into it nowadays as well. <laughs> follow us on social media. We really hope that you'll join us in our conversation tonight. You can follow us on Facebook, uh, Twitter, and, of course, YouTube. You can find some great videos on YouTube, including these shows, which will wind up there in the next uh, couple days or so, which will be quite exciting to watch. But Ohio Valley Emmy, that's our user handle. And tweet at us with OE, or OVE50. You can also tweet, well, I guess you can use the hashtags hashtag now on Facebook. OVE50. OVE Everything is evolving constantly. Yes. So tell us about what you're enjoying about this evening, and we'll read some of your responses later on in the evening. Well, now we're going to bring in a group of lovely ladies. Ladies, come on in here. We've got Tara Lynn. Um, Help me with the last name. Smith. Smith, okay. 
Smith, got that, okay. <laughs> Uh, this, and uh, we'll just go down the line here. I'm having tr a little bit of trouble reading the card, so go ahead and we'll go down the line. All right, Terrilyn Smith, Rachel Vegg, Micah Lenneman. There we go. That's, that's, where the, uh, that's where the miscommunication was. <laughs> now, this is for nonfiction, the seventh work of Mercy. Yes. Do explain. Okay, so the seventh work of Mercy is a video based off of an um, all-boys school in Louisville, Kentucky, Trinity High School. Um, they have this program here, um, or there rather, that takes um, the homeless and the poor that can't afford burials or funerals themselves, and they actually put them on for them. So, and it's called the Seventh Work of Mercy because of Catholicism, and one of the works of mercy is bury the dead. So, very cool. Now, how did you girls come across this idea? How did you come up with it? Well, we saw an article in the newspaper about the boys and about what they do, and we thought that would be an amazing idea for a video and so for a documentary. And so we thought we would recognize what they do and all their hard work. Very neat. That's that's so great that you know you guys are so young and you're already making a difference. How did you feel when you won the award? That's the important question. Um, we were really excited, and I think our teacher was almost more excited than we were. <laughs> but um, overall, we were all really excited and blessed to get this chance to come here and receive the award. And now that you've won, is this something you want to continue doing following school? Um, you can be honest. It's okay. There are some people that get out of the business, if not. Probably not, but I don't know about them. Um, I don't know. We're still kind of young. We're only juniors, yeah. so we still have a still lot to figure time. it out. Yeah. But Absolutely. definitely, like smaller like projects with schools still mm -hmm. outside of schools. So we'll still definitely use our technologies. So. Absolutely, really cool. Anyone else you want to thank that you didn't get a chance to thank on stage? Um, our parents. They yeah. put up with a lot and yeah. driving they, us places. They, they drove us there to film. Drove us back. It's kind of hard to do sometimes without that driver's license. That's the crucial part once you get to be the professional in the business. Well, ladies, congratulations. We're very excited for you. We wish you nothing but the best of luck in the future. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Ladies. Smith, that's a hard name to pronounce. Yeah, I, know. I couldn't figure It'll that out you. for the life of me. Well, we'll keep things moving now. Sarah Owens and Jake Kenniff, am I pronouncing that right? Okay, good. There we go. These guys are from uh, West Jessamine High School. Is that correct? Please. You guys are from two different schools? Yeah. Oh, well, there we go. So, and then... Um, Jake, you are homeschooled, yes. correct? Oh, oh, you're homeschooled. Okay. okay, there we go. There's Everything makes sense now. <laughs> as, you, as you can tell, I'm clearly prepared for this. Now, this, this project is called Pie Thief, and already sounds pretty self-explanatory, but where does one get the idea to do a story about a pie thief? Um, well, I think Jake could help us better on this one. Okay. Well, we were just trying to come up with ideas, and we all were brainstorming and this is what we came up with so that's pretty much how it happened. <laughs> Why did you decide to do it in a sort of silent movie black and white type of feel? We thought that it would add to the humor of the movie and the black and white feel kind of just fit what we were doing so we thought it was good. Okay. Fantastic. Now where does one um, when, or I guess at what point uh, did you decide that this was award uh, winning uh, material, or did somebody submit this uh, on your behalf? Um, somebody submitted us on mm -hmm. for somebody submitted it for us. Mm -hmm. We were um, doing it with a camp, a film camp, and the kind of guy over the camp decided to just enter one, see what happened. Well, it so clearly turned out very well. You are also being honored tonight for your stop motion film uh, called yeah. Be Friends, correct? Yes. So, for those who aren't in the film industry, how do you go about making a stop motion film? Um, well, it starts like any other film with a, with a script and a storyboard, and then we just, we were all new, um, the whole, we, it was a club at, at my school. Um, so we just started testing things out, using books as food and stuff, and then we got, went on location and just shot it. Took a few tries, but we got there. Sure. How did you feel when they said that, oh, hey, you guys are getting the student production award for this? I was pretty surprised. I didn't even know it was entered into a contest until about three weeks ago. It feels pretty good. It's probably fun to tell your friends, too, right? Yeah. <laughs> are, they, are they pretty jealous you're here? A little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone else you want to thank? Um, well, the director who started the club, um, I guess the people who, uh, with, in the case of Pie Thief, the, our teachers. Mm -hmm. Josh Overbay, he was the director of the club. 
Wonderful. What are your plans going forward? I'm going to Asbury University and studying media communications. So there we go. Yeah. Future media professionals. How about you, Jake? Uh, not there yet, but I'm considering learning media. Well, hopefully this is the first step for you guys to get into the professional side of this. Congratulations, and we'll hopefully see you back here again next year. All right, All right thank you guys. Hi. Very cool. Stop, yes. stop motion has yeah. always been a really, really fascinating, very time-consuming art as well. You usually see that. At, at least not at such a young age. Yeah. So, but very cool nonetheless. Now our next, uh, our next award winner is someone who's not unfamiliar, at least to me. This is something I'm a little more prepared about. We're going to bring in Emily Muting. Emily, come on in. She is the David J. Clark Scholarship recipient this year. How uh, you doing? Good to see you. How are you? Doing well. You had, you've had a pretty busy summer apparently uh, winning the scholarship. Yeah. yeah, I've had quite a summer. I interned at um, NBC4, WCMH in Columbus, so that was good. But what kind of experience was that for you? Um, it was nice because I work at WEV with you, as you know, but that's PBS affiliate. It's mm -hmm. kind of smaller, Athens market. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, the commercial station in Columbus, I've really learned a lot about how a real TV station works, real in my regards, commercial station. Mm -hmm. So, And I know that's what I want to do, so that was nice to reaffirm that. Now, what specific uh, facet are you interested in? Is it more producing, writing, reporting? I want to produce, mm -hmm. and that's pretty much set. I'm not much of a reporter, mm -hmm. I've decided, so um, yeah, and I direct to a WAB, sure. but I think I've decided producing's where I want to be, so. And how does it feel to be winning this scholarship tonight? Well, it means the world. First off, the money helps. It, schools, tuition, rent, mm -hmm. everything, it sure. helps a lot. Um, but even more so than that, being here tonight, being in the atmosphere, getting my name out there, so hopefully I can get a job in two years. Hire her. I'm good, <laughs> I promise. But um, no, it means the world, so I am very thankful for this. So. What was your reaction when you initially found out you were getting the scholarship? Well, I initially found out in the car when I got a phone call, and I, for about 10 minutes I had to be pretty calm because I was on the phone with Gary. and. Um, <laughs> Then once I got off the phone, I screamed, and my mom was in the car with me, so that was exciting. So um, I was very excited. That's fantastic. So lot, lots of uh, obviously great projects I'll, I'll at least get to see throughout the course of the year, and of course the people in the Ohio Valley. Anyone else you want to thank here tonight? Well, I thanked on stage, but I want to thank the Ohio Valley chapter for financing it and WAB and EW Script School for all the opportunities, and WCMH for the internship this summer, and my family and friends. Fantastic. Now, do you think you want to work in the Ohio Valley now after having that internship and after winning the scholarship? If I got a job in the Ohio Valley, I would work in the Ohio <laughs> Valley. <laughs> Again, hired her. <laughs> there we go. So, that easy. Well, congratulations, Emily. We're very happy yeah. for you. Thanks. And go enjoy the rest of your night. I will. Have a great day. All right. Time. You too. That's the second year uh, in a row, actually, someone from Ohio University has won that scholarship. Wow. True story, Rachel Thompson won that last year, and then Emily Muting takes it up this year. So very happy, very happy for her, of course. All right, let's move on. We're going into some of the college winners now. We're going to bring in Nathaniel Winkler from Asbury University. He's a winner in the short form fiction category. And tell us a little bit about your project. First off, congratulations. Thank you. And tell us a little bit about the project now. The um, project was started in October of last year, uh, it took us about six months to complete, lots of late nights, lots of sweat and tears, and you know, um, but it paid off in the end, got to premiere at a Highbridge Film Festival, and now it's won a Natus uh, Ohio Valley Emmy Award, which I'm super excited about. Gotta love those student production awards, yeah. I'll tell you what. Now, give us a little bit of a, uh, of a synopsis of what the uh, piece was about. The synopsis is about two fireflies on a date, and things just kind of go horribly wrong, and the male firefly keeps trying to fix it, and it does not work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, where did you get the idea for fireflies? For fireflies? You know, it was actually really interesting because the idea was sparked by uh, actually seeing and hearing a, a building on fire and I was like I wonder what could happen if a bug started a fire and I thought of a firefly immediately so the story kind of progressed from there. Wow. Yep. <laughs> it's interesting. Um, Jen Silver and I wrote the story together. Uh, she came up with a lot of really really good ideas and I made it come together as a director uh, in, in scenes and shots and everything. Very cool. <laughs> Anyone you want to thank? Uh, I'd like to thank all my friends and family that put up with me during the production of this. Um, it was a long haul, uh, lots of late nights, uh, lots of not seeing anyone for many, many days. Sure, sure. <laughs> um, thank my school, uh, all the help that they provided and the resources. Um, Asbury University provided 50 computers to help render this thing. Wow. Uh, it took roughly mm, 
a, a month's worth of rendering time. So it took quite a while. Uh, so definitely thankful for that. And thank God for the talents he's given all of us. Absolutely, gotta love that. So what are your plans moving forward now? Plans moving forward, trying to find a job, either in animation or special effects. Hire him. <laughs> I would love it. <laughs> we'll give you the same plug, there you go. All right, well, congratulations, thank you. Nathaniel. Thank we'll you very, very much. For you. Take it easy. So cool, so yes. cool. Because we were looking at this earlier, we're like, is this something that one of the professionals submitted? Mm -hmm. Because just the attention it's to detail, the I I could at. I could easily picture myself, and I'm sure you could too, sitting in a huge movie theater oh, yeah. watching one of his productions. Totally. Fantastic! Totally. Congratulations again, Nathaniel. We're gonna bring in Lindsay Hatcher and Joseph Battaglia. Hello. Very familiar faces. Uh, get on in here. Come on. We're we're all friends here. Hi. Hey, hi. Good to see you. Good to see you too. <laughs> so congratulations, guys. This is a student production award for Mohegan Light. Yeah. And tell us a little bit about Mohegan Light. Um, Monhegan Light is a short film based off of a novel written by Richard Russo. Um, it's about a director of photography who receives a painting from his deceased wife's past, and so he has to pursue where that came from. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Now, is this something where you could turn that Emmy Award now into, the, into that kind of uh, into that kind of thing? Instead of a director who gets a painting, he gets a Student production yeah, awards. Why yeah. now? Let's make a movie right now. We got yeah. lights and cameras. Hey, it's very true. Yeah. You could very well do that. What was your reaction when you found out that you guys won? Um, I, I was excited. Um, you know, everybody kind of goes their different ways in college, but uh, when we get this stuff, it kind of, um, at least through social media, kind of sure. unites everybody and oh, kind yeah. of lets us reminisce about like how much fun we had making this thing. Absolutely. So it's good. Your friends jealous back at school? No, no. I, I think, I think everybody's, uh, I think everybody's happy. I think they're jealous. They can't. They can't share this. Probably can't be here right now. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I know they're here in spirit, I guess. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Now, what, what do you think is one of the coolest things that uh, the, the school really has to offer uh, people that are going through your program? Um, it's called 419, and it's like different crews um, basically come together and make different short films or sometimes feature films, and it's all like student fundraise, like we produce the entire thing so that's like real world experience yeah. right there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Anybody else you guys want to thank tonight? Um, I want to thank Ohio University, Frederick Lewis, and um, friends, families, everybody who donated. I want to thank you guys for allowing us to have the rest of the crew and yeah, cast. We had the greatest experience you could possibly have your senior year of college and so this is this is a dream come true. Absolutely. Yeah. There you go. What do you guys plan on doing after college? Um, actually, I have one year of school left, mm -hmm. so I'm going to Los Angeles in the fall, and I'll be doing an internship at a casting agency and taking classes out there. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. And uh, I'm actually already graduated, and I'm producing my first uh, feature-length film in Octo October called uh, Mutual Assured Destruction, so I'm excited to be a, finally a real producer. Hey, there wow. you go. Wow. Uh, yeah. so exciting. Gotta love the real world, yeah, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Just wait till that money starts rolling. Yeah. Oh, 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 then please oh, call hey. me. Yeah. <laughs> Well, guys, congratulations. Yeah, We're very you. happy thank for you. you. Mm -hmm. And uh, we hope to see you at least in the future. Yeah, yes, absolutely. best right. of luck. Thank you very thank much. You yeah. Go ahead. You guys can just don't trip over the wire. That's all I ask. <laughs> We're not insured. <laughs> not be very good. Oh, thank you. Wow, and now we have another I group from some OU. Off to the side. I'm sensing a trend I'm here. A little concerned. There's this guy with glasses, and he's smirking at me. <laughs> and he doesn't usually smirk at me unless. He's either really mad or really happy. I'm assuming the latter here. So we'll bring the guys on now. These, this <laughs> is the, the group from, all right, full disclosure, WAB. Hi, Tyler. How you doing, Gabe? <laughs> Bobcat Sports <laughs> Showcase. Good to see you. <laughs> it's good to see you, too. Good how's good to see you. Uh, how's yeah. the real world treating you? Hey, you know, it's a little bit different than Ohio uh, University, but we're, we're hanging in there. Very cool. Right. We'll go down the line here. We've got Graham Fugazi, Morgan Overby. Welcome back, by the way. Graham Fugazi, Alex Steck, and Colin Brown. Hi, Gabe. Hi. How are you doing? <laughs> Again, mo uh, yeah, you sh well, you're back next year hosting Bobcat Showcase. The rest of you guys have graduated. Yes. Very cool. How, how does it feel to for you guys that have graduated to, to go out with the Student Production Award? Uh, amazing, honestly. Um, there are so many people that worked on this show, and I wish I could thank more of them, but there are easily 30 to 40 people that worked on this show throughout the year, as you know, mm -hmm. uh, students that tirelessly worked and showed up for the little things that really made a difference, and uh, it really counted at the end of it, and that's why we're walking out of here, is because of those people that really worked on the show. Absolutely. Now, Graham, you were the host of this series. Um, what was the hardest part about pulling a show uh, like this together? Him. No, no, <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I think that, uh, I think one thing that 
was the most difficult was just trying to kind of please everyone, you know, get, you know, even coverage for all of our sports teams, you know, and proving football to basketball all the way to, you know, field hockey and things like that, you know, kind of getting equal coverage and, you know, showing all aspects of Ohio athletic sports. So I think that was one of the most difficult things. I think we did a pretty good job. I think that he did a great job of, you know, kind of choosing each part and which part was the best. So, you know, I think uh, the product kind of really proved, you know, what we did this entire year. Colin, uh, over to you now. What was one of your favorite moments from the season that really stuck out to you? Oh, favorite moment of the season. Gonna put you on the spot for this. <laughs> yeah, that's really putting me on the spot. I'm, I'm not prepared for this. Um, I, I wouldn't necessarily say like something on the show necessarily, mm -hmm. but probably like all the Thursday nights that were up there until three, four in the morning. And I'm, I'm not very easy to work with as, as far as Tyler goes and like Graham goes. So, you know, like Graham trying to ask me for an intro and I just tell him to figure it out himself or I, I'm sure I didn't make Tyler's job any easier. So probably the favorite moments are all behind the scenes. It was late Thursday nights putting the show together. Fantastic. And, and Alex, you had a very crucial part. Uh, Alex Steck here. You had a very crucial part in, uh, in, in reporting for the show. What were some of your favorite sports to cover and, and do stories on? All of the sports, honestly. I think it was great to be able to cover such a variety of sports. I mean, doing men's basketball, just not only getting to cover the games, but also finding the stories within the team. And that's what was so exciting, to cover and do those feature stories and be able to do that. And then also, in the spring, go to golf and do both men's and women's. So just being able to cover a bunch of Ohio sports and tell the, tell the student athlete stories on and off the court. That's really cool. Now, Morgan, you're taking over as host next year. I'm going to throw that plug in because I can. <laughs> uh, where do you hope the show goes moving forward? Well, you know, I'm going to be producing and hosting, so taking over both of these great guys' jobs. But I think we've got some big shoes to fill. But no offense, guys, we've got some good reporters, so I think we're going to be just fine. <laughs> <laughs> that hurts a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. Tyler, just a little bit. Oh. I mean, as we're holding this, it hurts the oh. tab. Hey, I hope the best. I really do. I hope the best so much. Very really cool. Do. Anyone else you want to thank while you guys are here? I know you've got like a million people to thank, yeah, but if you want to name a couple, we've got a little bit of time. There are too many people to thank. Um, I, as I said on stage, you know, Mark Brewer, obviously, WAB uh, general manager, and really was phenomenal all year long and got us all here. And uh, from freshman to senior year and since we've graduated, and on top of that, Evan Shaw and, uh, of course, the show's creators, Tanner Smith and uh, Grant Burkhardt and all those guys. And Hey, throw a plug to you. You, you helped out every now and then, there too, Dave. Go. Thank Aww, you, man. Oh, yeah, sweet. Absolutely. I, I did have to bring him an air mattress one time. That's the only one thing I'll own up to. I was there until about 5 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> yeah. and Gabe just, oh, you know, my yeah. office, so I got an air mattress. Yeah. No big deal. It's it happens. Good. You sleep overnight at the station sometimes. <laughs> well, guys, we're very happy for you. Congratulations, and seniors, of course. Best of luck as you move forward with your careers. Hire these people. If they don't have jobs, <laughs> hire these Please. people. They're very good. Please. All right. Thank you, guys. We appreciate it. Thanks, Gabe. Thanks. It's very cool. Uh, the, the, I actually can uh, recall a personal anecdote that show spawned from just covering football to all of Ohio sports. So it's really cool wow. to see how they've how they've taken a show and how it's progressed uh, like that, and how how they've made it uh, uh, able to progress in, in that amount of time. It's great. Now I'm a little nervous again because. Uh, we're going to bring in some more people from WAB. These these guys are are also pretty much next to my desk all the time at WAB on, <laughs> on a constant basis, and uh, and and so we'll we'll bring them in right now. And <laughs> two of the orneriest looking guys you'll ever see, but so super proud of them nonetheless. Uh, Jimmy Eckert and Levi Krieger from WAB, and this student production award is for the high school football program Gridiron Glory. How many is this now for Gridiron? I know right now this is the third award in a row. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not, not sure, sure overall. Total. Overall, I think it's I, th I want to say it's too many half, to count a dozen, two hands, half a dozen probably. or so. Very cool. What what uh, what about Gridiron Glory do you think makes it work as a series? The fact that it's in Southeast Ohio. Um, for people that don't understand, football down there is. It's like the mecca to them. It, every Friday night, they go to the stadiums, no matter where it's at, in Athens, Trimble, um, all the way up to Tri-Valley. And everybody that's in town goes to these games. And the great thing that we get to do is we get to cover them um, from preseason to during the season to postseason. We got to go to states last year with Trimble High School. And we have such a strong following. And that's what is amazing because we know that we have such a huge crowd behind us watching the show and interacting with us and knowing that not only does this award you know, show that what we accomplished, but you know, this also shows that the people that are watching are actually there and it means as much to them as it does to us. So with that crowd watching, how does it feel to be winning this award? Uh, definitely, it's a great feeling. Um, 
just to be able to the validation of knowing that we put out a good product for our viewers and that they they tune in week after week just knowing that they're going to see what they want to see and that we're able to give them what they want like it's it's just a very unique experience to be able to give such a unique audience exactly what they want exactly what they want week in and week out. Now Levi as director you actually went through a, a lot of changes behind the scenes uh, technically uh, at WAV. Talk a little bit about that. Yes absolutely. Um, this year was the first year that WAV TV was full HD 1080p broadcast. Um, so over the summer we actually had to strip the entire control room, relocate it, set up a whole new system, set up whole new cameras, uh, video switchers. We had a Grass Valley Ignite installed. It was more than an undertaking for sure. And where do you guys hope the show goes from here? Um, there is no limit. Uh, luckily I get to come back and produce for a second year and I fully expect to be back right here. Um, sadly I'll be with a new director, our assistant director this year, Mark Bobson. But we're, the sky's the limit for us. I think uh, we have a lot of teams that have potential to go deep into the playoffs along with the players that are on these teams. So it's going to be a fun year this upcoming year and for the years to come. Well, congratulations, guys. We're very proud of you, of course. I know I am personally. <laughs> so thank you very much. And we'll catch up with you guys later tonight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the best. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks, Levi. Thank you. Very cool. All right. So I know what you're thinking. Oh, my gosh. That's a lot of OU people here, right? <laughs> Still really cool. But this is the kind of stuff that your schools can be doing. So feel free. Submit those student production awards. Yes. Go online, ohiovalleynatus.org. You'll be able to see when the entry submission deadlines are. So if you, th if you have something that you think is very worthy of winning a student production award, we want to see it. We want you to enter it, and we hope that you'll be up here joining us next year at the yes, Student uh, Production Award <laughs> interviews. It's, it's really cool. Well, once again, we'll plug our social media pages because it's really important for us. Mm -hmm. uh, if you'd follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and, of course, YouTube, it's really easy. All the names the same. Ohio Valley Emmy. Use that hashtag OVE50. It's such a special night for yes. us tonight. The main show is getting underway here mm -hmm. as we speak. And Just we want to see what you ago. have to say online. So. 50 years, that's a lot of time for television. Yeah. And of course, really happy to be a part of it and be here with you tonight. Even though this web stream is only about four years old, <laughs> still great to be a part of it. Very exciting. Well, let's get a little palate cleanser here from OU. Let's bring in some more guys from Asbury University. <laughs> Will McBride, Isaac Harrison. Guys, come on in. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Now, this is is this a first time production award win for you guys? Absolutely, yeah. Um, I never thought I'd win an award for a short film I made in the course of three weeks. So, Now, tell us a little bit about it. Uh, absolutely. Uh, it was for a, a class I had to uh, make a short film as my intro directing class, and I had this grandiose idea of a multi-time traveling, time traveling type of thing, and it, it kind of fell through, so I was like, I'm about a month behind. I need to come up with a story quickly. And, Next thing I know, I wrote this story about teleportation and sci-fi and, you know, wrote it, produced it, this guy shot it, did an absolutely great job with uh, the camera and lighting, all the stuff that I have no clue about. And um, I'm just glad it got recognized and people watched it and they liked it enough to send us out here, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, what was one of the biggest challenges in, in producing this and making it ready, uh, looking at the final product? Uh, the, the, biggest, the biggest problem for me was just coming up with this huge idea the story was way bigger than eight minutes long to be honest with you and it was troubling to compress all the ideas all the, the story I had in my head into like eight minutes and and um so it's a little dense not a lot of people got it a few people were just kind of like left it going like what but the people who do got it I think and especially like uh you know the academy they they liked it enough to you know give me an award and I'm really appreciative of it. it's a big confidence booster Absolutely. to say the least you know now, what did you? Uh, what What was your reaction when you found out you won? Uh, I was just shocked. I guess I don't know. It was it was a out of body experience. I guess for me. No, um, you never thought you'd in your wildest dreams win a win a production award for something like this. I, I not really. No, I mean I always wanted to and like uh, wanted to, you know, get my stuff shown. <laughs> sure. But um, yeah. I was just a great guy with cameras and cinematography and whatnot, and until, like me, I was struggling to get a crew together, and he was just my buddy, and apparently he told me this way later that he'd never DP'd or, you know, director of photography, he'd never done that before, he'd just been cam hopping, so I think he did a fantastic job, you know, for a first time oh, absolutely. DP. What was great. that like, doing it for the first time? Uh, it was a lot of fun, it was, it was fun having Will there to kind of, I don't know, just kind of be a friend and accept any mistakes I'd make and 
it was it was a great experience. So you're gonna work together on more projects now in the future. Yeah. Anything new planned? Yeah, we're. Uh, I was. He's graduated, and I'm starting my senior year. But I'm planning on a, a project in the fall, and I've asked him to come back and help me out with it. So uh, we're gonna make that happen. So I'm looking forward to that. Maybe win an actual Emmy for one of those, since you'll be Ooh. since you'll have graduated. Yeah. That would be yeah. that. Hey, there you that go. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, after you graduate in another year, what do you plan on doing? Uh, you know. Um, marketability, you know, finding out what I want to do professionally. I mean, I'm a senior in college, I should know by now, but the fact is, as long as I'm working in television and film, you know, helping stories come together, you know, making sure people are entertained, I'll be happy. I don't, I don't care if I'm getting sandwiches for the crew or if I'm directing, you know, I'm just, I just want to be a part of it. And I'm looking forward to the future. It's a and love you, of the business. And you graduated. Any future yes. plans? Uh, I want to work in uh, media and film. Uh, Hire him. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, anything, really. Yeah. yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. Will, Isaac, we're so happy for the both of you. Congratulations. We hope to see you back here again Absolutely. in the future. Again, hire these guys. All of these guys, they're great. Mm -hmm. You should. You've got to go. Go on our website. Check out the works that they've yeah, submitted. So much they're talent fantastic. here. Thank, Thank you. you guys. Thank you so Thank much. We appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Congratulations. So cool. To, to have those friendships form. Yeah, you know? it really like, oh, is. Well, I've never done this before. Well, it's a matter of putting your heads together and just giving it a shot. And sometimes you come out with something as great as a student production. Yes. Board. Very happy for them. Let's Very bring exciting. in Kyle Newton now. Kyle has is from the University of Cincinnati Blue Ash. That's correct, right? Uh, yeah, that is okay. uh, that's correct. Yeah. Come on in. Come. <laughs> yeah, of we, course. Got, we got microphones for this. It's all right. a bit shy. No, <laughs> it's no, no problem at all. <laughs> now, this was an animation reel you submitted. Mm -hmm. uh, animation, uh, you, you find nowadays, at least with students, it's, it's a massive undertaking. It's huge, yeah. Um, uh, the, what I made in there um, was a collection of all the, a lot of the best animations I've made over the past year of being involved in the program. Um, but uh, those took t countless hours to do. I couldn't total up exactly how much it was. Um, but yeah, you have to go in frame by frame and animate everything. Um, and, but giving it that attention to detail really makes it uh, work well in the end. Absolutely. Now, no. Oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, in that reel, did you have any particular favorites that you had produced? Um, well, the one that I uh, liked the most and I spent uh, the most time on by far um, was actually a segment just involving a little uh, lizard that um, was um, is collecting a bunch of uh, red things to uh, put into his little burrow. Um, it's based off of uh, an animal called a bower bird. They, uh, they collect colored objects, put them in their uh, burrow, and then they just uh, um, clear out a space to dance to attract females. Wow. Uh, I have a background in zoology, and I feel like that informs a lot of what I do there, too. Wow. Mm -hmm. Is that something you hope to do following school, then? Uh, yeah, and actually, um, what I have there isn't really complete. I'd love to finish the whole uh, um, series, or the whole story that I've made there. Um, uh, but then, in terms of, uh, of what I want to make, um, just all across the board, I'd love to do um, a lot of different things, and there are just too many ideas to work with sometimes, you know? Well, sometimes yeah. you can combine those things and, and wind up with something whole, all new and, uh, and something that's really innovative, of yeah. course. Uh, yeah, and uh, animation is all about being innovative, you know? Um, and uh, that's really what sells. You have to come up with some, something new, something uh, visually interesting, and um, also get a good story in there, too. It's a, like, like we said before, it's a huge undertaking. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Anyone else you want to thank here tonight? Um, well, uh, I, as I said on stage, I have to thank my parents again. Um, they're the ones who uh, put up with my uh, aspiration to be a professional artist. Um, which, yeah, is a bit of a, a daunting thing for uh, parents, I'm assuming. Um, and then my professors just uh, uh, got me through there to begin with, and I wouldn't be anywhere without any of them. Um, so, yeah, uh, guys at University of Cincinnati, David Hartz, David Hubble, um, they're some of my uh, good professors. Absolutely. University mm -hmm. of Cincinnati Blue Ash is just, they've, they've got such an incredible student base, such a great program there as well. And, and it's very evident here tonight, obviously, with, with uh, you winning the production award for that reel. We hope you finish that project. Yeah. And we want to see you back up here again with one of the real statues. That would be great. But I'd, even like another, I'd like to get another award. <laughs> that would be nice. We, believe me, we all do. There, there are probably 50 people in here that are like, we want more. <laughs> Yeah. But we're very happy for you. Thank you so much for, for joining us yeah. tonight, and, uh, and best of luck to you in the future. Yeah, th it. thank you for having me Hope around. Good to see man. you back here. Thank you. Thank yep. you. And, uh, well, we got you. Thank you. Yeah, we got you. That's so cool. And that wasn't even a finished product. Right. But still, and he still won an award. Again, so time consuming, but already we've seen, we've seen two great uh, production award winners here tonight. Well, hey, folks, social media going to plug out once more. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Hashtag OVE50. <laughs> what is it about Facebook that's so alluring to the younger crowd, I wonder? At least I to mean, you, as, as a young Facebook you user. You get to be in touch with all your friends. 
and you get to see what they're talking about. How did you do it before Facebook? Face to face? Uh, yes. <laughs> Primitive technologies. When the power goes out, there is no <laughs> Facebook. There's face to face. <laughs> the original communication. Okay. <laughs> Enough of that. Let's bring in Jarek. Jared. Uh, Jarrett. We'll get it. I promise. I promise. Help me with your last name, because I'm going to butcher it regardless. Ingaseth. Ingaseth? Jared Ingaseth. There. I said it. I said it once. It's on record. It's on tape. We've got that. <laughs> From the, you're from the University of Cincinnati. Correct. And you were the photographer for Catalyst. Uh, yes, yes I was. Tell us about Catalyst. Uh, so Catalyst is it's, it's a short form, short film. See, now you've caught the stumble bug. I got the, I'm sorry. I got the stumble bug. Okay. I got the stumble bug. It's okay. <laughs> Take two. But it, so what it's basically about is um, a false flag operation. Are you guys familiar with that term? I'm not. Tell us about it. So what it is is it's when kind of a, a government wants to get involved with another nation and mm -hmm. maybe get in a physical, like a war with them, right? Mm -hmm. But they need a reason to. Sure. So they create this reason. Mm. So that's, that's what the, the premise is. There you go. Now, uh, what was that aha moment when you, when you compiled, uh, or when, when all the clips were compiled and, and you saw the, the, the finished piece, uh, that you're like, this, this is something. This is something that people are going to be talking about for a long time. Um, that's a hard question. Yeah, it is. That's why I ask it. I think, and I, I think a lot of people, especially a lot of students, a lot of younger people, even older mm -hmm. professionals, um, after I view my stuff, I'm like, man, I hate this. Like, I can't even look at this right now. And it takes, it takes a, a while to appreciate what you've done and all the hard work and all the hours that you've spent into it to actually, you know, appreciate your work, like Absolutely. I said before. <laughs> well, it is. One, one is their own worst critic. Yeah. Right. What was your first inspiration behind the piece? Hmm, first inspiration... Oh, that's a trick one. What she asks me? the tricky questions, I ask sorry. the hard questions. Right. No one expects the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> Monty Python term, sorry. Well, okay. it, it's interesting because I've always been into comedies. Mm -hmm. I've never been into like doing serious films or anything. And this is the first really serious drama piece I've ever done. Um, so it's hard for me to like pinpoint my exact inspiration. Sure. But uh, I'm trying to think. Yeah, I can't even think. Like, even my favorite films aren't even in like a similar genre. You know? Was it hard doing a genre that you weren't exactly familiar with? It wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. It because it just kind of flowed. I had a really good um, base around it. Like for, as far as the writing goes, I didn't really figure out what I wanted to do exactly till super last minute. Mm -hmm. um, but my sister, she's involved. She went to the UC Blue Ash also, mm -hmm. and she helped me with the writing a lot and really figure out what direction I wanted to take it. So um, I forgot what the question was, but. <laughs> It's okay. Sorry. Where am I? <laughs> <laughs> now, anyone else you want? <laughs> yeah, we are in Columbus. True yeah. story. Uh, anyone else you want to thank here tonight? Um, definitely my friends. I've never been around such a great group of people. Um, all my crew members. We were out there in the freezing cold, frozen, barren field, like eight hours. Mm -hmm. One of my my lead actor, pretty sure he got frostbite. Yeah. May have lost a few fingers. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But um, it explains why they call him Nubby now. Ooh, that's right. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. My friends and family, and also the support system from the college. Post college plans, what are they? Still figuring that out. I do freelance right now, mm -hmm. but. Uh, Hire him. Want to be a cinematographer one day, maybe director? I like directing. We'll see where it goes, right? Hey, there we go. Jared, we're very happy for you. Congratulations, and go enjoy the rest of the night. I know you and the guys <laughs> yeah. from the University of Cincinnati Blue Ash are yeah. super happy about it. So, congratulations. Thank you guys. So cool. So cool. Yes. It, and that's, that's actually something I've noticed too. It's the guys that do the the uh, the satire and the comedy. When when they do something serious, they they almost appreciate it more. Yeah, it's really interesting. Because you spend all this time trying to make something satirical, that when it comes to actually putting the work into doing uh, doing it serious, uh, it's more focused. It's more. Uh, right. It's it's almost in a sense more credible. So very cool. Very happy for Jarrett there. But now we're going to bring on Julia Stark from Asbury University. Hey, congratulations. She's all Hi, smiles Julia. here tonight, folks. Congratulations. You're, you. This is the first time win for you? Yeah, yeah, it's the first time. Congratulations. Now, this is for nonfiction, and the title of it is Ashes to Ashes, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tell us about that. Well, Ashes to Ashes is a documentary that explores the condition of a local tobacco farmer in Nicholasville, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And what I realized is, you know, tobacco typically is approached as a black and white topic, you know, good versus bad. Sure. But coming from the farmer's perspective you realize there is a gray area and it's not black and white and there are people who are l making a living off of it and right now the industry is really struggling and so it was just really neat to be able to see that through his story. So you really learned a lot oh. in making this? Yes definitely I mean I've never 
I mean, I don't know anything about tobacco growing, <laughs> so I was like, okay, this is pretty neat. It's kind of cool to learn about, so yeah. So why did you decide to take um, the position of the farmer, of the tobacco farmer? Well, my producer, Joel Sams, his grandpa was a tobacco farmer, and so he had found out that there was a big government buyout, and that was kind of the main issue with the whole tobacco farming condition. And so he was like, you know, I really just want to explore this topic. And I was like, hey, I really like farms and sunsets, so let's do it. <laughs> and so we went out and, like, met the farmer and just interviewed him and everything. So. Wow, yeah. and there's that. It's <laughs> so cool. Anyone else you want to thank here tonight? Um, obviously my school, Asbury University, through their teaching and patience with me, and I'm always appreciative to them. Um, NATAS, thank you for the award. It's very pretty. It is. <laughs> and uh, to Joel, all his support, invaluable, is great, or very valuable. I'm not sure if I use that word correctly. but That's um, the Emmys. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mistakes are acceptable, but... Yeah, so just everyone who worked on it as well. Very, very grateful to them. Well, and we're very, very grateful to you for talking to us. Thank you so much. Go enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank we you. hope to see you back up here again. Thank Best you. of Thanks. luck. So cool. Yes. So cool. Yes. Tobacco farm. And, you know, of course, the agriculture the culture in itself, very interesting, of course. But then mix interesting in. Interesting uh, perspective. Mix in, you know, there's, of course, there's always both, there's two sides to a story. And right there, you've got two sides to a story. It's very yes. nice. Well, Abby, that does it for our student award winners. And so at this point, we're going to bring in Angela Rygard. And Angela, we'll bring you in here uh, real quick. Uh, Angela Rygard from, from WAUB will be, will be taking over here just, uh, just momentarily. But uh, uh, just, just to wrap up the student uh, production uh, awards here, what, what's your biggest takeaway from, uh, from the award recipients, the honorable mentions that were up here tonight? You know, my, I think my biggest takeaway is that you don't have to be a so-called professional to, um, you know, succeed. These people are in high school and they're winning these awards, and I think that's great. Absolutely is. And Abby, we're so happy you joined us here tonight. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Abby Grise, you know, in her own mind, is going to be a future superstar. We're very happy for you. <laughs>